Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The treatment plan for this patient has designated the cascode restoration to be placed on the maxillary right first molar tooth. This is tooth number three. The existing condition of the tooth uh, shows that uh, previous amalgam restorations have been placed, but a mesial buccal cusp fracture has occurred, and there's also, uh, in addition to the mesial occlusal amalgam restoration, and restoration in the occlusal lingual groove at the distal aspect. The intraoral occlusal analysis is performed by marking the uh, occlusal surfaces with articulating paper and noting the uh, functional occlusal centric stops here on the uh, porting cusp of this tooth and the centric stops in the central fossa and the uh, mesial marginal ridge so that uh, it's noted that these must be preserved uh, in the uh, completed final restoration. The adjacent teeth are also evaluated to determine the location of the centric stops there. The radiographic view on this periapical radiograph demonstrates that the tooth is uh, a non-vital tooth has been endodontically treated and filled completely with gutta percha and the central portion has been filled with cement. The posterior bite wing radiograph uh, demonstrates an improved angle of viewing to see again the central portion of the crown of the tooth has been filled with gutta percha and cement. The mesial uh, occlusal amalgam restoration has not been overly extended uh, cervically and will be uh, ideal for replacement with the uh, preparation for the cast gold restoration. The uh, amalgam carries across the portion of the occlusal and the distal aspect is not curiously involved but will be included in the preparation to provide for support of the uh, remaining tooth structure and retention of the cast restoration. The beginning of the preparation of this tooth in cavity design will be performed uh, with a number two round burr in the ultra speed handpiece. Use air and water spray coolant. And the uh, occlusal portion of this uh, old amalgam restoration is partially removed by dividing it and uh, removing uh, bulk portions and then removal of this mesial proximal segment and mass rather than having to remove it by uh, complete uh, destruction with the burr itself. It's now possible to see the uh, central area of the occlusal where the cement filling was. And then the uh, round burr is again used to initiate the opening in the distal proximal aspect. Immediately then a change is made to the 170L uh, taper fissure burr to begin uh, flattening the pulpal floor and uh, establishing taper in the occlusal walls. This is carried on until the entire occlusal is uh, outlined and then the uh, cervical portion in this uh, uh, mesial buccal cervical aspect is uh, prepared for a uh, shoulder design using again this tapered fissure burr. This will provide for adequate bulk of metal in that area. Moving on to the distal occlusal aspect, the uh, distal proximal area has been uh, established uh, in cervical depth and then tapered form. It's noted that the enamel in contact with the adjacent tooth has uh, not been removed with the burr since that would damage the adjacent tooth. And this is performed using a bin angle chisel to plane the proximal walls uh, on the buccal and lingual aspects. This will provide for a flare of those proximal walls for later access to the uh, 
slicing disc. The initial stages of the preparation have been outlined at this stage with the old amalgam restoration having been removed, taper established in the occlusal walls, and now proceeding with the uh, tapered fissure burr again, the establishment of the reduction on the lingual aspect of the crown and the establishment of the shoulder on that lingual aspect. The use of the shoulder here is to provide for uh, lessening of the extreme taper of the lingual surface and will uh, enable for a greater bulk of gold in this area for strength in the uh, restoration. This shoulder is carried around the entire lingual aspect but is in a supragingival level. The refinement of the preparation is performed using uh, uh, low-speed handpiece uh, instrumentation with the 169L burr. And this is uh, used to establish the uh, definition of the proximal axial line angles. Now the uh, high speed is again used with the taper fissure burr to begin the um, cusp protection on the distal lingual cusp and also to perform the cuspal reduction of the lingual cusps. The reduction here will be in an amount of uh, approximately one and a half millimeters to allow for adequate thickness of metal in the gold casting to cover this area. The assessment of the clearance uh, is uh, made by placing two to three thicknesses of 28 gauge soft green wax uh, in the patient's mouth, having the mouth closed and determining that uh, the adjacent teeth have perforated the wax, but the area of the prepared cavity has not perforated the wax and is indeed making only a slight indentation when three thicknesses of wax have been used. The distal buckle proximal design of this prepared cavity is placed using a lightning disc on an extended length mandrel and straight low speed handpiece. And a very few uh, revolutions are necessary to uh, provide for the so-called slice portion of the preparation in that area. The final uh, refinement of the preparation will be performed with the flame-shaped finishing burr to place uh, the entire circumferential bevel on this prepared cavity. This is done around the entire cervical aspect as well as on all uh, walls such as this buckle wall. The assessment of the effectiveness and uh, completeness of the bevel is evaluated using the trial compound impression. Determined by looking at this that the bevel has extended past the cervical floor and is complete in its dimension. Approaching the rubber base impression of this prepared tooth, the maxillary model is covered with moistened asbestos in which occlusal stops are placed for the acrylic tray. The self-curing acrylic material has been placed over the asbestos and molded to place forming the tray and the handle in the anterior area. After it has hardened, the tray is removed and a spatula is used to remove the asbestos liner. This liner has been been removed and the final traces of it are removed with the brush so that the tray is adequately cleansed prior to the impression procedure. The stops that have been placed for the tray are raised areas at the distal marginal ridge of each second molar and one at the incisor area. This provides space for approximately a three millimeter thickness of the impression material in the tray. The tray will be dried into the mouth 
and the midline marking has been placed for uh, location of the tray in the uh, patient's mouth. The uh, rubber adhesive uh, is painted on the tray in, in the entire internal area and on the peripheries. Now the tissue retraction cord is placed into the gingival crevice around the prepared tooth. And after having been in place for five to seven minutes, is removed. The Mercaptan rubber base impression is taken by mixing the light bodied material and a heavy bodied material for the tray uh, to be placed into the mouth. The light bodied material is placed with this syringe and the heavy body material will be placed into the impression tray. After the tooth has been rinsed and dried, following removal of the retraction cord, the impression material is injected first at the distal aspect, and then we'll be covering the entire prepared tooth very carefully and injecting the material into the gingival sulcus where the bevel has been placed in the prepared tooth. The heavy body impression material is placed into the tray till it's completely filled and placed into the mouth for a period of 10 minutes from the start of the mix. After removal, the impression is inspected thoroughly to assure that the entire registration of the prepared tooth as well as the remaining teeth in the arch have been uh, completely recorded. The acrylic temporary restoration will be fabricated using this clear plastic mold which was made uh, over the study cast. It is filled with soft curing tooth colored uh, acrylic material and placed into the mouth following lubrication of the tooth and tissues. After it has set in the mouth for a few moments and started to harden, it's removed and the initial uh, trimming will be performed while the acrylic material is still in a semi-softened stage. This trimming must be performed quickly before the acrylic has reached its final hardening. It's returned to the mouth and placed on the tooth until it has hardened <coughs> and then will be removed carefully using this spoon excavator to lift it the trimming of this acrylic temporary is performed with a large acrylic burr in order to uh, develop the contours where any roughness occurred. The acrylic temporary restoration is then returned to the mouth and evaluated for occlusion. Areas that may be in hyperocclusion are re reduced uh, with the uh, crown removed from the mouth. A zinc oxide eugen all cement will be placed into the crown for its insertion into the prepared tooth. Temporary crown is positioned to place, seated, and the excess cement removed. Again, the occlusion is evaluated to be certain that it has not regained hyperocclusion. Following dismissal of the patient, the impression is taken to the laboratory and prepared for pouring with this improved stone uh, material. The dowel pin has been suspended over the registration of the prepared tooth, and uh, using this stone, uh, the impression poured completely with these additional areas provided for retention of the second pour uh, at a later time. After the model has been completed, pouring and separated from the impression, the area of the prepared tooth, which is referred to as the die, is sawed on the mesial and distal aspects in the embrasure areas, and then is tapped for removal from the model base. Following removal of the die, it is carefully trimmed to expose the entire prepared aspects of the tooth. Following trimming, the die is reinserted into the model base, and the maxillary model is brought together in an articulation with the model of the mandibular arch. These are 
bound together and mounted with plaster on the articulator. In preparation for the development of the wax pattern, the dye and the opposing uh, areas are lubricated thoroughly with microfilm. This dye lubricant will prevent the uh, adherence of the wax to the stone dye. Excess lubricant is removed with an airstream and the insertion of the spatula into the access opening will remove the dye from the model. The initial increments of soft green wax are placed and flowed over the dye surface and held in place as they cool in order to provide for complete adaptation of the wax to the dye surface. Pencil markings are placed on the opposing model tooth to indicate the location uh, of the supporting cusps and centric occlusion stops to be developed in the wax pattern. A cusp cone for the first supporting cusp area is developed at the mesial lingual cusp of this maxillary molar. Following the development of this uh, articulated uh, area of development, other cusp cones are developed for the non-supporting cusps, the central fossa occlusal stop, and the axial surfaces, uh, which are then completed. Anatomical fissures and grooves are developed uh, by light carving in the occlusal aspect using the Ward's carver. The occlusal registration is uh, evaluated by placing the zinc stearate powder upon the occlusal surface of the wax and the articulator brought together and moved into the eccentric movements to determine any interferences which uh, should be removed carefully from that occlusal surface of the wax pattern. When this has been completed, the dye will be removed from the model and the articulator and further development of the marginal areas will be pursued. This is done very carefully in order to avoid abrasion of the dye and develop the necessary contours to the wax pattern in those areas. And this will continue around the entire marginal areas of this wax pattern. A slight amount of wax is placed at the proximal contact areas and this is called plussing the contact. After that has been completed, the wax pattern is ready for the placement of the casting sprue. This sprue is attached in an area of greatest bulk of the wax pattern, firmly attached, and then having additional wax placed around it so that it is, it is coned for easy flowing of the metal into the mold cavity. The sprued wax pattern is placed on the sprue former and uh, prepared further by coating with a debubbleizer solution and made ready for the investing and casting procedures. The casting has been pickled and scrubbed and is cut from the sprue with a separating disc. The internal aspect of the crown is inspected to determine if there are any irregularities present which need to be removed before placement on the die. Following complete seating of the casting on the die, the disc is again used to contour the area where the sprue had been attached. The laboratory finishing procedures are continued by insertion of the casting and die into the model for evaluation of the proximal contact areas. Those are identified by the slightly shiny area, which uh, was abraded from the dull surface on placement in the model with the adjacent tooth. The proximal contact area is then adjusted 
using this uh, Brolu uh, rubber abrasive impregnated disc. And after having been adjusted completely and seated in the model, the occlusal adjustment is started by registering the markings and adjusting the occlusion with this round green stone. The enhancement of the occlusal fissures and grooves is performed with a small round finishing burr. Then the occlusal surfaces are completely smoothed and the proximal areas are smoothed and uh, minor marginal adjustments made with these abrasive discs. Areas which may be in concave in form should be adjusted with the carrot-shaped white stone. The entire surface of the casting is then smoothed with the burlude wheel in order that the casting is then prepared for the return of the patient and the try-in in the patient's mouth. When the patient is returned, the temporary uh, acrylic restoration is removed carefully from the tooth, and any remaining cement which was uh, contained in the temporary is removed from the tooth in order that the tooth be entirely clean. The casting is placed into the mouth and attempts to seat it with moderate finger pressure. The evaluation for complete seating of the casting on the tooth is performed with the explorer at the marginal areas. If the casting does not appear to be seating, then dental floss is used to evaluate the contact areas. Excessive contact on the casting will result in a shiny marking as indicated by the arrow. This provides a ready identification of the area to be adjusted with the burlu disc. Following adjustment of the contact areas on the mesial and distal aspect, the casting is seated on the tooth with the orange wood stick uh, as an aid in compression. All of the marginal areas of the casting will be evaluated with an explorer. Any areas of excessive contour will be adjusted by rotating the medium cuddle or fine sand disc from gold to tooth at slow speeds. Other locations require uh, similar consideration of the rotational direction of the disc. These areas then are reevaluated with an explorer for continuity of the contour of gold and tooth structure. Areas near the gingival tissue, which would be injured by discs, are adjusted with a carrot-shaped white stone. Similarly, the areas of the lingual aspect are adjusted and smoothed in that fashion. The occlusion is reevaluated using articulating paper. Uh, green wax, uh, as is necessary to determine that the placement of the centric stops are correct or will be needing some further adjustment. Minor adjustments may be performed in the mouth. Any excessive amount of adjustment should be done by removing the casting from the mouth and uh, replaced on the die. Again, the Intensity of the occlusal contact can be evaluated with the use of green wax and also the use of shim stock in evaluating the closure contact from tooth to tooth around the mouth. After the occlusal adjustments have been completed, it's possible to see the markings of the centric stops. The casting is then removed from the mouth, replaced on the die, and carried to the laboratory for final finishing procedures. Final marginal adjustments which were not accessible in the mouth may be performed on the die with this carrot-shaped white stone. Polishing with a bristle brush and BBC compound is performed with very careful, delicate uh, brushing action in the occlusal anatomy in order to avoid excessive loss of gold and uh, centric stops. 
The same is true with the marginal areas. Casting is thoroughly scrubbed and cleansed and prepared for cementation. Cotton roll isolation is placed in the patient's mouth and the prepared tooth is dried with the air syringe. Zinc phosphate cement is mixed and brought to a primary or inlay setting consistency. Cavity varnish is placed in the ent entire prepared cavity using the cotton pellet. A coating of the cement is placed into the internal aspects of the casting. Cement is also placed in the prepared cavity and the casting is inserted into the mouth on the prepared tooth, pressed to place initially with finger pressure to be sure that the alignment is correct. And then the orange wood stick is again used for more heavy compression. The patient closes thoroughly, being sure that the casting is seated it's evaluated again with an explorer at the marginal areas. All margins are then burnished with hand instruments to assure their complete adaptation of gold to the tooth. And then the orange wood stick is removed and the cotton roll is placed that the patient might close more tightly. The cement is allowed to set for a minimum of seven minutes from the start of the mix. And then the excess of cement is removed from the casting and the tooth. The air stream is used to identify residual cement in the gingival crevice. Shim stock is used to confirm the complete seating of the casting and harmony of the occlusion. The completed restoration on this maxillary molar reveals the satin finish uh, to the cast gold and the buckle aspect, the axial contours as seen uh, in the lingual aspect, and the anatomy uh, uh, for functional occlusion in the occlusal areas. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.